My next guest is going to be taking on Ray Hayes, FAC 25, July 27th. It is right around the corner. Happy to be joined by Deron McKaysa here on the program. Deron, how are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm doing awesome. Now, uh, we got to talk about this off the top because people might get confused. If they look up your name on Tapology, you're listed as Deron McCant. Uh, you and your wife actually have a, a, like a last name that you guys use together, um, just to avoid any confusion here. Uh, but yeah, you want to talk a little bit about the, the last name change you have. Yeah, so previously, my you, you're, you guys probably remember me from the Rama Cant, those that have, have actually seen me fight or those that know me. I, My wife and I got married, so we changed our last name to Makaiza. I never knew my biological father, so we just kind of want to start our own legacy and, and have our own last name. So it, I wanted to keep the Irish part in it, and then the Isa part, my wife is Colombian, Latin, and Peruvian, so it's kind of... Kind of interesting last name, but it's pronounced Makaiza. Okay, well, there we go. I'll talk to the guys over at Topology. I know a few guys over there that maybe can get that switched up and uh, we'll yes, get that all great. solved for sure. I got, I know a few people. Um, first time you and I have had a chance to talk, man. Where did this journey start for you? How did you get involved in combat sports? Yeah, so I actually grew up a wrestler. So I started wrestling around the age of five, six years old and always loved it, man. I just always loved being in a tough atmosphere, being top kind of being the 1%. I looked at wrestlers, you know, one of the tough sports, kind of was overlooked by football and all, the, all those others, but um, took it pretty far in wrestling. You know, I was around great wrestlers, wrestled around. Um, I was on Missouri's Fargo national team, you know, went to state all four years, placed three times, and then I was going to wrestle in college, but then I decided to go to the Marines. I didn't know where I really wanted to study, but I always loved uh, um, fighting. I was a huge George St. Pierre fan growing up, man. And a lot of my wrestling coaches were starting to have some of those amateur fights at those like bars, you know, because this is like two, early 2000s. So UFC wasn't what it is today, but it was really starting to pick up some steam. So I saw a lot of my coaches starting to fight and I was like, man, that's something I'd really want to do down the road. So when I was in the Marines, did my four years and I was like, man, I'm going to get out and, you know, uh, go start fighting. And that's kind of where I ended up. Okay. Well, there we go. Right. Um and then I also noticed uh, there's a bit of a gap in your career. I think 2018 mm -hmm. till till uh, that, that you actually fought Montel Jackson. Uh, for people who know him, and the yeah. UFC picked up a pretty big win last weekend. A uh, little bit of a gap there. What was the reason for that? Yeah, first of all, Montel Jackson had one heck of a knockout. I literally texted Zach Cummings right after that fight. I've always watched his fights now. But yeah, after the Montel Jackson fight, I tried to have a comeback fight after that right after, and I got really sick and. They really thought I had Crohn's disease from cutting a lot of weight and I wasn't really dieting correctly and just going through a lot of family problems, family um, grief, if I would say. I was I lost a few family members, including my stepdad that I was really close to. And I was just kind of in a season of trying to figure myself out, man, and was married. Uh, my wife and I just, I got unhealthy and I was just trying to figure out my body and then one day you know I was sit there I was watching my fights and I actually was hearing my stepdad's voice um over the crowd like in the fights and I was like man I really want to get back in there I you know sitting on a couch of regrets like I didn't know what I want to do with my life you know corporate arena just wasn't my thing that nine to five so I got back in last year you know and got to fighting and then I wanted to you know just have kind of a retirement comeback fight. And I talked to Zach and my body held up well in fight camp. And now I'm like, man, let's go see what I can do. You know, I'm 32 years old, but I feel great. I got my body in control. Um, I, I, I'm all in, man. <laughs> I get Good. to do this full time now as well. I teach a youth program. So it's kitty pretty nice right now. Tell me a bit about that. You said a youth program. Is that like through like a church or something? Or is that just like an, a community organization? What, 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 tell me a bit more about that. That's really interesting. No, so when back in the day when we were Glory MMA, I'm sure you know that. Whole, yeah, we know the whole story. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah that yeah, whole yeah. story. I don't want to really get into that, but yeah. uh, we were the they James Krause and Zach Cummings and all them wanted to start a Glory North at land, and they came to me. I was on Team Reaper at the time, and just had a great talk with them. They told me they wanted to make me an instructor, and you know wanted to help me out in my fight career. So I jumped on it, and they meant every word they said. Man, they helped me um, learn how to be an instructor and i've helped build a uh, youth program from scratch and today it we're actually about to celebrate 10 years of it being open and um so i can't i walked away from it for a little bit and i got to come back to it it's just some opportunities that opened up and that's where i really fall in love with and martial arts i get to do it full time i love coaching i got a kids tournament this saturday and that's something that i'm able to do full time you know I, like i said i've been on mass since i've been five years old so you know i i just I want to be on match the rest of my life. However, I got to do that 
I want to do. And I just know my competition days are always limited. So I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how can I always keep this around in my life? And then also just give back what I've learned. You know, I've had so many great coaches in my life that's helped me out. Let's talk about Ray Hayes, 4-0. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? I feel like I match up well pretty much against anybody. I'm probably always going to say that. I'm just that type of guy. I feel like I'm very well-rounded. I've worked a lot on my striking so that I could be. Obviously, I have a great grappling background, so you're going to see a lot of my fights um, winning from there. But if you take a look down the road, though, a lot of my – I feel like I kind of like a Nate Diaz sometimes. Like, I don't – I wasn't punching hard or anything, but I felt like some of these guys, like if you go back and watch my Sharky Slater, I threw a head kick and then he shot on in on me. So – you know, for me in this Ray Hayes fight, I look at it and, you know, people, I hear people talk, you know, people say things, oh, he hasn't fought the guys you fought, this, this, and that. But I'll say one thing positive I see about Ray Hayes is, you know, he's handling the guys that he's supposed to, he's handling. So I'm definitely respecting him, just staying away from knees and chokes from him, uh, playing my ball game and seeing where he wants to take this fight, you know. I'm, coming in there i'm feeling sharp i'm feeling composed i had a great fight camp this is my first fight camp with jason high in it and oh, love man, it yeah yeah man and i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of hard-headed at times i kind of come in you know you think you know what you know and then you get somebody like a dog like jason high and he comes in and kind of revamps everything i'm not going to get into too much detail but I'll, I'll talk with you another time but mm. um he definitely came in and I was frustrated listening to him and, and trying to take in what he was telling me. And then I was getting black eyes and bloody noses all the time, trying to figure it out. And finally he just started clicking and I got it. And man, that's one thing when I go get this W man, I'm going to give Jason high a lot of praise. Cause Zach Cummings has always been in my fight camp. So, um, I'm, pro I'm coming in with a little bit more dog, I think, Good. <laughs> which I like. You know? um, what about training partners? Who are some of the guys that are helping you get ready for this? Oh, yes. I'll tell you a big one that really pushes me. Jeff Manala. Is, um, um, I've been sparring a lot with him. Gage Young, Alex um, uh, McGowan. I got Alan Olivius. We got, gosh, we got Zach Long. He's on the card. I've been going hard with him. Um, we got Sean Atkinson, and we call him Big Sean because we have another guy named Little Sean who has a fight in Nebraska coming up. But, man... Zach and I was just talking. So I'm used to the room back in the day with like Julian Marquez, Grant Dawson, David Onama, those types of guys. And it was kind of a bigger, bigger room. I would say, you know, Jason, we, we had Trey Ogden, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. and now I look around my, the room that I have right now, I have a ton of 35ers, 45ers and 55ers that are all locked in. Um, they're consistent. They, they push each other, we push each other, and it's a great atmosphere for me who is a 45er. So that's one thing I'll say about my teammates. Man, we got a squad. We got a squad right now, some some 35er, 45ers, and 55ers. I'm excited for them. And, and it just seems like such a great group. Um, you know, I interviewed Gage. I'm talking to Alex on Monday. Uh, you guys got a lot of good – and, and what's been so cool is to see you guys, like all the people that came from that original group, go on to bigger and better things as well. You look at what Trey's doing with Marathon MMA. Yeah. You look at, um, you know, all these guys, David Onama, we're seeing him over there at Factory X. Like it's been really cool to see you guys all kind of, uh, you know, bring that success that you all had at once to other places um i wanted to ask you though you talked about zach cummins jason high two ufc veterans guys that have really mm -hmm. transitioned well to coaching how much of an asset is that for you to have you know these two guys that have been there in the big show jason high one of the worst cuts in the ufc of all time with that whole situation i still that yeah. still bothers me honestly because like there's been players yeah. that have done far worse but just how much for of an real. asset is that for you in your career to have these two guys that are just you know the veterans of the game that can you know bring their experience to you on a regular basis yeah, man, I just think their their mental fortitude that they bring to the game really helps me. I notice um, they don't really back down from coaching you. That if you know what I mean, like yeah, there was a week, there was a week where I was kind of hurting, and they was like, "Put your big boy pants on, like, like, come on, like, you got to be in practice. We got to keep going. You got to keep pushing. You got to communicate with us. Like, they're texting me. They're on me." And I think that's what you need. Like when you got, when you're 32 years old, I have a five month old baby now, yeah. and so things are a little different for me. You know, and I've had to learn to adjust and adapt and overcome. But, you know, both of them are fathers as well. So I'm not just getting that. I'm not just getting um, I'm getting life too. like how to do this with a baby, how to be show up, how to figure things out, you know, and I think that's great. And then also, I mean, Zach Cummings fought in the UFC for 14 years, man. I ask him questions 
after questions after questions and he always gives me answers and i take them to heart him and jason when you have guys that have been in those types of uh, at the highest level man you just want to listen to them and they won at the highest level it's not like they just been there you know they hung around you know jason had his thing whatever but uh you know zach you know he 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 fought tim kennedy you know he's fought some good guys <laughs> So you're going to want to listen to those guys. You know, I don't know what I'm there's I don't know the next level, but they do. You know, I haven't experienced the next level, but they do. You know? Yeah, no, it's a big help for sure. Um, are both those guys going to be in your corner? Who's going to be in the cage with you on the 27th? Yeah, they should be. So it's kind of a, a mix up right now. We're all kind of talking about it because we got Alex. We got Zach Long. Yeah, so it's like the whole team's got, there. Yeah, there's a, it's, it's a, lot, a lot of names on, on your team uh, on that card, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So Jason and Zach and should be cornering Alex during that time. I'm gonna be having Gage Young back in there helping me warm up. I'll have a uh, Muhammad. Um, we call him Mo. Um, he he fights 45 for FAC as well. Um, I'll have guys. I'll have my team back there. So you know we all locked in. And the cool thing about my team is, and obviously Zach Cummings will be in my corner. It'll probably be Zach and, and Jason, but Zach Cummings will be my main guy. But uh. Um, the cool thing about us, man, we have such a um, so many guys that I, I would trust in there that have been yeah. through battles, you know, and if not, if they're have battles coming up soon. So we're all there for each other, man. Love it. Uh, how's this one playing out? July 27th. How do you see it unfolding? I see me winning. I'm not one of those guys. I'm not Ray Hayes. I'm not going to give you no envelope telling you what <laughs> joke it is. Right. I'll probably have like. I probably this past three, four months since I've got his name put on my desk, tried to find how many ways I can not be taken out and how many times I could take him out. But I'm going to tell you, I'm just coming for the W, dog. I'm a competitor at heart. I want the W. Um, get that bag and come kiss my girls when I come home. You know, that's what I want to do. Well said. Um, by the sounds of it, you're just kind of taking this fight to fight and see where this goes, right? Because usually a lot of guys, you know, especially uh, when they got a big opportunity here for a title, uh, you know, that that's big, right? That leads to other big opportunities going forward. Is it just kind of wait and see? Um, or do you have goals that you want to achieve? Is it sort of take me through your career beyond this fight? Yeah, man, I just, you know, I sit here and I, I look at my career and I'm, this is my 18th fight. I've only lost two, you know, mm -hmm. and that's through my amateur. I went 10 and yeah. 1 as no, no, for sure. Yeah. yeah, and then pro. But, you know, I just want to see what I got left. You know, I want to push it. And I just want to, who, whatever Premier League wants me, I want to go after it. You know, if it's UFC, if it's the PFL, if it's the Bellator. I have a friend, Johnny Eblen. I'm, I'm watching him oh, do fine. Johnny, man, Fonny. one of the best. And I love yeah. he bought that Sprinter van. I think that's so cool that he's, he's doing that thing now. So cool thing, he wrestled at Park Hill. Like, I've been in wrestling rooms growing up. So it's like, I see guys like this, and I see those things. So for me, I'm just trying to bag as much money as I can and then use it and just keep building Ignite, our martial arts academy. And eventually, I think I see coaching in my future. I think I have a high fighter's IQ. It's something I'm passionate about. I, I just love the technique of everything, and I love helping people aspire to their goals in martial arts, whether you're bullying, you're bullied, or you just want to – you know, learn self-defense or you want to get in the game, whatever it is. That's what I, I just want to be around the sport, man, as long as I can. But right now I'm building that brand. Um, I want to go win this fight in style, do what I got to do to get in there, get out, go get the next one, you know, and just go on a fighting spree like I used to. It's FAC 25 coming up here July 27th. You can watch that live on Spectation Sports. Duran, this was awesome. Thanks so much for the time. We're looking forward to this fight. If there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I will give you the last word. Yes, I would like to thank Levity Events um, for sponsoring me during this fight, as well as um, Vincent Lawn Care and my boy Brad Swick's Electric. Um, he can come in your house, home, or commercial. He's a good guy, but trust him with anything. But I thank you guys. Without y'all, um, I want to be as put together as I am because I use that for acupuncture and some new stuff and taking care of my body now. So thank you.